first off, before going any deeper, I want to know your like background a little bit about when it comes to metal music. So do you recall when you heard metal for the first time? Yeah, I think, I mean, some are going to argue if it's metal or not, but to me, it totally falls in the category. I heard I heard um, Bring Me to Life from Evanescence on the on the radio in France, uh, with which, to be honest, is very special because metal never really reaches uh, main radios in in France. It's not a style that is very popular here. So, um, so that was like like an absolute surprise and an immense shock for me to hear the heaviness of the guitars because compared to any other pop rock sh- things I was listening to, we have to still to admit that the production of that record for back then was was way heavier and um yeah that was a revelation to me i was like what is that what is that and i started to get to want to know more and discovering where i could find more of that kind of music which i didn't even know how to call because i had never heard the word metal before so yeah i do remember (laughs) so what was like in that heavier music that sort of like caught your attention and made you fell in love with it do you know it's the power the power of the heaviness of the guitars it's the darkness and the intensity like you can find a lot of darkness in classical music that's also why i love classical mu- music they also go, very much they go a little bit in hand in hand yeah totally and it's just that crunch you know that guitar crunch that heavy heavy guitar crunch with that heavy well produced drums going over it just felt so powerful to me and it opened the imagination for and for a world of music that I that I that I didn't know of of that that subgenre that is completely far away from the mainstream at least in France and and yeah that's I think that's what I loved the most at first was that that heaviness that deep sound yeah so was like Evanescence the kind of band that made you become a singer or were you already singing around that time when you heard Evanescence from the radio? Oh, I've been singing since since I'm since I'm a child. This is something I've always loved doing. Um and I've absolutely enjoyed singing in very different uh formation or groups. Like I was in the gospel choir, I was in sacred music choirs, uh, um and I loved it anyway and my first love in music is not metal; it's more is more pop music, and I, I, I loved also singing to myself a lot of a lot of different things. Um, but discovering Evanescence was at some point a revelation to me, where it says, "Oh, I can be a woman in that dark and heavy environment, and I can express those feelings in a dark and heavy environment, keeping my femininity as a vocalist." And as an artist, because I think Evanescence has this beautiful duality between her, the piano, the, yeah. the orchestration sometimes, and her voice that is also very delicate when it wants to be, and yet the super heavy neo metal sound that goes next to it. And I love that contrast. So was Evanescence the type of band that wanted you join like more of a, like a metal band and go like that direction as a musician? No. No, I think I think it was like I was playing a lot a lot, a lot of piano also back then and I don't know if because I was 16 when I listened to Evanescence first time and I don't know if back then already I wanted to form like to be in a band like that per se I don't know but the moment in which I think one year later I discovered Nightwish that okay. band was the one that made me believe that I could have my own self-express in that direction. I think Nightwish was the band that inspired the start of a journey where I said I want, I want to follow that path. Like, like, like that opened the possibilities for for women to be in that universe. And I was like, I want to be a part of that universe. I want to be, I want to express myself in those colors in those productions, and I want to do it as a singer in a band. I think this. I think Nightwish was more the band for that. <laughs> so what vocalist did you like admire when you started singing at, at a young age? And and do you remember like singing some specific songs and like covering them in your like younger years? 
in my younger year and years i loved i loved um madonna celine dion um i love the cranberries i love tori amos i loved uh, milan farmer from france i loved um yeah then it's a lot of other male artists but i i also admired male artists too like i was a huge michael jackson fan and then um when i discovered um metal yeah taria um and then the big names you know sharon the nadel florianson of course even even simon simons from epica were part of the bands i love to listen and to sing to myself in my in my bedroom <laughs> So, so where are you first, like, sort of mimicking your idols when you were covering them and then, like, figuring your own way to develop your own sound? Or or how has your, like, sound developed the way it is today? So, yeah, I mean, I started to take classic singing lessons when I was 16 years old. So that, that totally helped me acquire the basic technique um, for breathing and support and opening and all that that, that I of course use until now um but i also developed my my chest register like my my pop my pop chest voice singing everything else like any songs that i really liked um i never ever wanted to mimic anybody it's just it's nice to train on a music you feel connected to and the, the bands i mentioned before were bands i did feel connected to on an emotional level so that felt good, but for sure, at some point, you want to go for your own sound, and this is something that I had the chance to um, work on a little bit more when I was working on my own material, starting with Visions of Atlantis. Okay, so Visions of Atlantis was the first sort of band where you were pushing yourself, like on your like own creative path. Yeah, Visions is the the first band that allowed me to have. Uh, creative freedom yeah okay okay and that that's where basically everything started for you as a singer in a way mm, not in, i mean in a way yes if we if we talk about creativity yeah. and yeah if we talk about career no i had other bands before um i was part of serenity also before visions of atlantis so visions is not like it's my first band but it's the first that really enables me to explore more of my my vocal possibilities and and creativity overall yeah was like wisdom was was that like the first metal band that you joined it was one of the first i had a very first band when i was 18 years old okay. uh, in Leo. <laughs> we did a couple of shows together but we never recorded anything and then in 2010 i joined wisdom from paris and we had also one 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 year something together with John Serenity and and then it's story people know. <laughs> so then when you joined Vision at Atlantis, then you started also touring like more heavily. So what yeah. kind of like memories do you have when it comes to the like first proper longer tour that you did? Were you ready as a vocalist to do like show after show after show or was it like an experience, like new experience for you also as a singer? So let's say I started touring with Serenity as a guest singer. So I was not singing every night, every song. I was singing every night, but not every song. Yeah. So it was like a first soft introduction to the world of of touring more than on a weekend. You know, I never kind of really did the weekender kind of things that new bands do where they start flying like four shows here, three shows there before they can make like a whole tour. I've never been through that, through that. I've always like I started with yeah Serenity with the first tour we did was a three week tour, um and then I was a guest singer so it was very light for me and then I joined I had another I was part of another project in France called Melted Space, um French metal opera and we did two tours together, where again we were like the opening act and I was not singing all the songs because we were like four singers, so it was like also again a soft introduction to the world of touring and then with visions for the first years we didn't tour like that too much we started touring in 29 2018 when we released the deep in the dark and again um, that was not a headline tour that was a support tour 
So it was a shorter set. So I have to admit that I was trying to go on tour in a progressive manner. I was not thrown into doing five weeks tour as a headline right away. I mean, nobody yeah. does that actually, unless you join a new band, I, I, unless you join a band that already were touring that much. Like, let's say you're the new singer of, of a band that just needed a new singer and the band was some, used to tour, then yeah, you have to suddenly be used to touring. So so I had the time to adapt, I had the time to train, I had the time to improve. But I have to admit that in these two last years with Visions of Atlantis, where we, we played over uh, over 80 shows per year, touring both the US and Europe, both extensively, it had me use my voice in a way and train my voice in a way that I never did before. And that was a absolute, like I, I did improve on, on my basis because I had to train my voice and to take care of it and to approach it in the most kind way so that it lasts yep. for the whole thing. Yep. And that was a very, very good learning experience on my own limits, on my own capacities, on, on knowing to know how to use my voice in a, in a way that it doesn't, that doesn't drain it. And, and basically the key word was relax. <laughs> yep. That's very important. That's very important. Yeah. But with voice, I just want to add up that you can, I think you can learn your entire life about, about your own voice. I think it's endless. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Speaking about like warming up and preparing for show, do you have like a routine that you follow? I used to be a bit attached to a routine because it made, made me feel like, okay, I've warmed up so I can go there and it's going to be fine. But when you honestly, after three weeks on tour and you still have two more to do, you're so trained the whole time. Like your voice is used almost every night that that you don't need that much of a huge warm up anymore every day. It's not like you haven't sung for two weeks because you've been resting and you need to get back to it and you want to, you know, get all the things running right. Um, and I realized it's actually more key to warm up before the sound check than before the show itself because we sometimes look down on sound check or underestimate the energy we put at sound check because we still need to sound like we sound in the evening otherwise the sound yeah. engineer cannot really do his job properly so it's better to arrive at sound check with a proper voice so i kind of do a bit of a warm up before the sound check so that i don't try to like scream like shout right away from from having not even talked so much in the morning or or something like that i pay more attention to this and then do some quick war vocalize before a meet and greet when we have one because we do an acoustic set and we sing already and then before the show it's also like a quick warm-up just to just to have the voice a little bit um, oily before jumping on stage but I don't do things any extensively anymore. I feel I don't I don't need it so much anymore. Unless I would feel like my voice is drained and I need to to make sure that I don't put shock on it. But happily, it's not happened too much so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are there like some specific foods or drinks that you have felt that they help you with the singing that you want to take before the show, or on the opposite side, something that you don't want to take that you have felt that it 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 just fucks up the show if you do yeah um like like food wise i totally avoid everything that is spicy um because it just irritates and it doesn't feel nice in the yeah. in in the overall system but oh. also i'm lucky as a vegan i don't need to i'm not eating lactose based products which is great because milk and cheese they're terrible for the vocal folds and and the, the part of your system too so i totally avoid that um i avoid alcohol almost the tour i don't drink anything even um like on days off i tend to avoid it sometimes the day before the day off maybe i have a glass of wine okay or yeah but that's a, understandable beer. Yeah, yeah so so no alcohol and then i have this little spray of a plant that is um meant it's been used for for ages because it's been recognized that it has properties to clear the voice okay and i tend to have it on stage with me and whatever i feel that attention or something i use it during not during during the shows and i have to admit my voice has been good for all the last tours maybe maybe this this definitely helps 
And I also like um, tea with ginger, but but not on stage, not I like it during the day. It's nice. It feels good energy wise. And if I feel drained or strained, I would add some honey in my hot drinks. I would avoid coffee though, and and drink a lot of water all the time. Stay very hydrated. Yeah, water is the most important thing for a singer. So obviously you've released a lot of albums with Visions of, of Atlantis, and now th- there's obviously one Exit Eden album out, and next one is coming. But are there like some specific albums on your discography that you could pinpoint where you have felt that you've taken a big step forward as a singer? From Wanderers to Pirates in the Visions of Atlantis discography um, was already a huge step because I could use my voice in a complete different way. Um, the, produ- the producer was looking for to for complete different things. They, uh, the songs were written in a, in a complete different mindset and I felt more comfortable to explore. There was more room for it and there was also more more desire to to have different colors on the record and I am happy that I could um, explore that. So I think my performance and my vocal quality from, from Wanderers to, to Pirates is already quite a step and I think that the record we're doing now that we just finished recording with Visions of Atlantis will already will be another step again making me use my voice in my voice in ways I haven't really done so far so did that forward. album like gave you a lot of confidence because you were like sort of able to do more and experiment more and it has helped you with these like albums after that yeah sure absolutely it, it's it's comforts you on Many levels that you that you can sing a lot of different things that um, that you can explore ex- like expressing your identity and yourself in, in in various colors and I really like like that. So the next Exit Eden album will be released on January. Uh, Femmes Fatales and it's obviously like original songs instead of the first one which was covers. So are there like some things vocally new things that you've tried? on this upcoming album? Well, there is uh, one thing I never did that I do on that Bam Patel record is to sing in French. <laughs> okay. I have an entire song in French from Milan Fano, this this French artist whom, I, whom I've always loved. And it was very weird to me to sing in French <laughs> this much because I never, I never did record myself in French. So it was really fun. Um, challenging as well because in French sound sounds completely different compared to English, and also all the way you place your voice, it doesn't sound the same, it doesn't feel the same at all. Singing in French and in English, so that was that was very interesting. Was it like difficult? Then, in a way, yeah, because I want I wanted to make sure. Okay, do the meaning, do the interpretation, do the emotion still come through as I mean them? using a complete different tool it's still french language it's my thanks god of course it's my mother tongue so it's there are things that are more visceral you know because they're part of my dna in a way but even sometimes like some sound some vowels i was the way i was placing myself i was singing differently than than the way milan fama was and i placed some vowels a bit differently and i was like "Mm, is that correct and i'm like yeah but if you have to push give more power and open your mouth. It's normal that it comes out also sounding a bit different. And so, yeah, that was a bit, a bit challenging in a very good way. It was more of a discovery, let's say, like stepping out of what I know was an absolute jump in the unknown to me. And and then on this entire record, Hannes Brown from Kiss and Dynamite, our, our producer, he wanted this entire record to sound a bit more mature than Rhapsodies in Black. And in my voice, he was like, "I would, I love you, Clemmy, when you, when you give me that mature sound." And he was push, asking for me to push my lower frequencies in my voice, and which is something that with Visions now on the new record, we did the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted a more pointy, pointy pop sound. So, so yeah, that's very funny. And sometimes with those things, and I've had that exact discussion with our producer. I was like, "Who am I if?" If I can sound so differently, if I can do all of this and and classic and mixed voice and belting and and whispers and 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 a bit of this saturation here and there, 
and I was kind of losing myself, like, like who is the real me? And our producer, something that felt very good to me, he said, I hear Clemmy all the way around. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I still hear you and your vocal footprint and, and that's it. So from the outside perspective, maybe for everyone, it's a no brainer. It's me, whatever the color I'm putting in there. Yeah. For me is it for me, yeah. Of course, when I have to think about pushing in a certain way and it feels less intuitive, I could feel like this is artificial because it's not how I would sing naturally, but at the same time it also serves the purpose and it's still me and I still feel it. So so I should just stop overthinking. <laughs> but don't you think it's also the beauty of having two different like bands? That you, yeah. that you can do those like different types of things as a vocalist at least i would feel that it's it's like the best feeling so you can sort of push yourself in different directions and learn new things about yourself like you yeah, said it's absolutely. an endless journey of learning new things yeah absolutely i think it's i think it would be a little sad i don't know actually if that's a good question like how would i feel if i would have to if i would always sing the same way yeah. in all the projects I could feel like I'm a strong trademark, and that's the reason why we want that sound everywhere. But at the same time, that's right now. I I feel like I serve a project more than I'm than I'm here for just like being me, and that's it. You know, it's like my I want to serve the music. I I'm an instrument. I you know so. You can play. You can play a piano key a hundred times, a hundred different times, a hundred different ways, yep. and it's still a piano. So, so I have to just accept and 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 embrace that versatility instead of thinking that it's that I am not appreciated for who my really voice, my real voice is. If that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, it makes, and 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 that's the way you are challenging yourself as a singer. If you would, if you would make like ten albums singing the same way, at, at least I wouldn't feel like proud of it. But now, when you are like pushing yourself, like you said, in two different directions, now it's you on the album. If you understand yeah. my point. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. So before we wrap things up, I have a couple of questions left. And the second last one goes that what were like your parents' reactions when they heard that you have joined a metal band? Oh, my parents, they're, they're artists themselves um, and, and music enthusiasts. Like my, my dad has a collection of over a thousand vinyls at home. Okay. So I never heard metal with my parents from their playlist. But I've heard things that went up to Kiss for Spheres or Queen or Led Zeppelin. So to to jazz and to to French artists and and mm-hmm. and, and classical music. So I've always grown up um, with music. So when when I wanted to play the piano, when I wanted to sing, when I wanted to do art activities, they were always uh, helping me and and encouraging me to do so. And when I was discovering metal and listening to the to it, I dragged my mom into the style. I was making her listen to what I like, and she she was very open to it. When I told them, like I joined the band, I, this is what I want to do. At first, you know, when I was 18 years old, it was a hobby and it was making me happy. And they would come to the little shows I did in pubs and bars, and and um, where I felt like, oh my God, I'm playing concert with my with my band and it's a creative band and there are people coming and it was um it was really cool and um I think they always they always supported me they never had I know it's not like my dad's cup of tea music wise I think he would love the day I make a solo album with me on the piano for instance uh, that would be more his thing but um but he came he come they come to my shows when they can and they enjoy it and they're happy that I'm happy. That's the most important part. Any kind of advice that you would like to give to a young metal vocalist who is just about to start that journey? Anything that comes into your mind? Um, exactly. One of, it's going to make a connection to, to one of your first questions about 
about founding your voice. It's like, it's normal to have influences. It's, there are guides on a path towards yourself, but the real core value of your art lies within. And the more as an artist, you would not stick to very clear influences you have, but also explore other ways, sing different things. I'm so happy that I sang in gospel choirs for the spontaneity and the improvisation and the groove. And I'm so happy that I sang in classical choirs for the technique, for the the precision and for the, the harmonies so that I can sing harmonies super fast on my own vocal takes because I've, I've sang in harmony in harmony with others and you can hear the, the, the you know, so I, I would recommend to diverse the experiences and dive into music as an art, not as a genre and, and feel yourself, go for, for what feels good to sing where you feel like like you let go of yourself, like you lose yourself, like you enter that zone. If it makes you cry, if it makes you feel anything, that that that's the way. If singing becomes a struggle, I mean, at some point, of course, there is struggling when we learn because, you know, there's a curve of, of, of learning. And and at the beginning, I didn't know how to support my sound and, and I hurt and it was painful and, and I couldn't do a lot and I had to improve and all and, uh, but the very at the beginning, the guts, the guts feeling of staying connected to the emotions that's super important. Techniques should serve emotion, not not the other way around. Like like losing emotion because you seek the technique only, and um, and get vocal lessons because as much as one can develop an amazing voice by its own, there is so much value from the feedback of a teacher in the very early stage of learning before you make mistakes that are going to follow you for the rest of your life or prevent you from uh, reaching your potential, your absolute potential. Like, as I said, technique serves emotion, technique serves art and taking, investing in getting to learn the techniques that would make you sing for so long without pain, sing back to back shows and shows and shows without, without struggling. That's because the technique is there. So yeah, and to, to sum it up is search for the core of what feels good and what feels right. And sometimes you can even realize, okay, I love singing that song. I don't know why it's not the kind of music I listen to so much. But if that song resonates with you, makes you feel good, there's nothing wrong with it. And sometimes we would, we, we would love to do exactly the art that we look up to, like, like let's say you're a guitarist and you're a fan of Metallica and you're like, I want to do a Metallica band kind of style. I want to go that direction. But you don't know that actually where you would excel at or what you'd be the best at would not even play guitar or play guitar in a completely different way. So move away from influences, find yourself in what feels good and take, take vocal lessons. Wise words, 